Praise the Lord, and welcome to Peter's Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church. And in many of our churches, our churches aren't even full. Now don't get me wrong, it's not about numbers. But at the same time, we have to begin to ask ourselves, are we thinking kingdom? Because every time we, many of us are called to the ministry, we think it's time to leave and go start a church. Are we thinking kingdom? We can't stay in the same church and use the gifts that God has given us to actually build up the local assembly that we're a part of because we think because we've had a strong testimony and somebody said they heard God, they heard God while you were testifying that you were called to preach. You have your initial sermon and you absolutely say nothing. But you know how to entertain. And so then you go out and you start a church. Now this is the thing. Let's think about it. Let's process it. So now we've already got 50 churches with all of these resources split up in all these different churches. All of us have desires to do certain things, but we don't have the funds. We're paying 50 different mortgages in 50 different buildings instead of being humble and being able to stay where God has called you and be able to serve. How much more could we do if we shut down a few of those churches and we all came together under one common goal to be able to do kingdom. To be able to serve the community. Because you can forget if you think that the United States government is going to be able to fund everything that we have need of. In fact, sometimes that can become dangerous when you depend on the government to do everything for you. And especially if we're a believer because sometimes we look to the government to do everything but we forget about God. And so God is saying now you have created another God. My mind goes back to the children of Israel. It was never his desire for them to have a king. But because they wanted what they saw everybody else had. They wanted one too. So it goes back to the word of God. All of us has to dig in. When the man of God is up here preaching and teaching his heart out, we have to buy in. We have to really want the word of God. Not just only for ourselves, but to change the atmosphere and the environment that is around. We have to really desire to do the work of the ministry so we can see kingdom principles manifested in the earth. We got to walk in integrity. Amen. There's no way to keep the integrity of the gospel if we individually have no integrity. If we have no moral compass. If we want to do things our way. There's no way to keep the integrity of the gospel. When you hear false teaching and false doctrine, we as leaders, we can't be cowardly. My Savior. We have to protect the sheep that God has assigned us to. We have to speak out when there's false teaching and false doctrine. This is what Jude, the third chapter says. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. In other words, you got to fight for it. Do you love the word of God so much that you will fight over it, that you will struggle over it when you see people using his word so maliciously? I've seen it. Been in church all my life. This Bible is one of, it is the most awesome book in the world. Amen. But in the hands of the wrong person, it can be the most dangerous book. Amen. Whenever you have a person when their heart isn't right, and they take the scriptures to, ma to manipulate them in such a way to mess with you, 
and to have you thinking and doing things that's ungodly. So we have to have men and women of God. And I want to challenge you tonight. You don't have to always be a pastor or a preacher. If you are a love of God and a love of his work, you can honestly contend for the faith. You can fight and contend over the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. So again, I know this may not be that exciting message. But there's so many scriptures in the Bible where it talks about sobriety. It talks about being sober. In other words, not intoxicated. Because a lot of times we're intoxicated on so many things. In other words, we're not thinking clearly on what it is that God is calling for us to do in this season. Hear what I'm saying? We have to get to a place that we actually hear God and know what he's saying in this season. And I'm about to close. I close with one of my other favorite scriptures. It's 1 Chronicles 12 and 32. And it says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. But I want to deal with the first part of that scripture. It says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. They understood what time they were living in. And with understanding the time that they were living in, it says they also knew what to do in this time. And the only way that we're going to know what time it is and know what to do is to be before God. Amen. Amen. It has to be in the presence. You have to be in the presence of God. You have to be in his word. You have to have a prayer life. It's non-negotiable. It's a must. I believe God still heals. I believe that he still delivers. Lord knows I believe that he still saves. I believe that. But I don't believe we have to have gimmicks in order for that to take place. Over the last year of just being in church and preaching the word of God, we have seen God do some miraculous things. Amen. Just by preaching and teaching the word of God, not tainted with entertainment, not tainted with my ideas and my philosophies. It was one young lady came and spoke with us. And she had told us about how she had to go to the doctor. And she said that she was going to have to have surgery to have some tumors removed. And so she told, asked us to be praying. And so he said, of course, we'll be praying. And wife and I said, we'll be praying for you. And so then a few weeks later, when it was about time for the surgery, she said, she came back to us at the church and she told us, she said, she said, Pastor, I got something to tell you. She said, I went back to the doctor and they could only find one small one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I said, say what? She said they could only find one small one. And she said, I don't have to go to the hospital for surgery. They said they can do it right there in the office. And so, as I sat there, or stood there, I was like, oh my God. And Cousin Jerry, we didn't drench them in oil. We didn't do like some of these people with mental issues, call them up, 
get the oil bottle and pour it on top of their head. All we did was just preach the word. And there's oftentimes I stand there and I'll just pray at the end of service and I'll just say, God, you know. You created these bodies. You know exactly what they're going through. God, you know how to touch them. And sometimes, I'll be honest, I love it that way because then you don't start looking at me and trying to create an idol out of me. Because that's what we have done, some of us as pastors. We've allowed people to exalt us into places where God has not ordained for us to be. And that's why some of us have left here early. That's why some are sick now. Because we got caught up in the emotions and the feelings of someone looking up to us. And so every time you need prayer, oh, I'm going to bring them to you, Pastor. Well, what about you praying for them? Amen. Praise God. The same God, the same Jesus that's in me is in you. They don't always have time to come to me. That's kingdom. That as a leader, I'm saying, look, I'm preaching to you so you can grow. So you can go out and do the work of the ministry. Yes, Lord. We can do this all together. But I pray that it was something that maybe I confirmed. It was something that you had heard before. And it's like, that's what pastor's been telling us. I pray that it's something that will reinvigorate this church. I don't care how old you are. My Lord. I don't care what your age is in here. I don't care that we don't see young people in here. I thank God for, and I believe God that he would touch you all. He would give you an insight that you never had before. Amen. That you will begin to connect with younger people. No church is meant to die out. I believe that he will reinvigorate you. <laughs> I pray that he will allow you to see that you're worth something valuable. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. I pray that he will put a burning in you that you never experienced before. And that your burning will be contagious. In Jesus' name. That God will take you into a new place. I believe God. Amen. Amen. God, do it for your people tonight. Yes. God, touch them. Amen. I pray for my cousin, Lord. Jesus. Continue to give him strength. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. To fight. Yes. Continue to give him that wisdom and that strategy that you placed in him. Yes. God, to build your people. To build ministries. God we thank you for the wisdom. And the knowledge. And the revelation that you put in him. At such a young age. God we thank you for it. Strengthen him in every area of his life. You know what his desires are. Father give him his heart desires. Meet every need. Make every way God. You've already given him favor, but continue to give him more favor. He's your servant, Lord. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we praise you. In Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen. God bless you. May the people of God say amen. 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 I asked the question that was found in the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Luke during the Emmaus walk. 
And it's a question that we've all heard, but I'm going to ask it. Did our hearts not burn? May the people of God say, Amen. 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 I, I want to take a moment in all humility to ask all the members of Peter's Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church, if you would stand that we may all say amen, all members of Peter's Tabernacle who are here, amen, the people of God. And I would just like for the people of God to, to just say thank you for our trustees, our ushers, our officers. During COVID, I, I was not here, I was, um, to, to use biblical language, I, I was out in, in, in the dispersion. I was out in the Midwest, but we'll call it the dispersion during that time, doing ministry. And it was the membership of Peter's Tabernacle and the community of Iron Man that kept this great church that's been here since we will soon be celebrating 155 years. Wow. I'm also going to ask the members of First Baptist Church, Rose Hill, if they will stand, that the people of God may say, Amen for them, Amen. We thank God for Brother Bats. We thank God for all of our members. From my understanding, we also have a number of visitors who are here. We just want to take a moment to recognize our visitors. I know we have visitors who are um, joining us. If you would stand, that we may say Amen for you and recognize our visitors and our guests who are here. Amen. I am um, simply going to step, a, step aside that my cousin, Elder Reginald Grimes, Pastor Reginald Grimes of, and I'm going to say this, I don't know if the word the is in the name of your church, but, um, and I'm not an Ohio State fan, but I don't mind taking good stuff from people whenever I like it, and they have a way of saying the Ohio State, so I'm going to say the pastor of the Holy Ghost, the. <laughs> And I just, again, want to express my sincerest thanks, cousin, to you, to your family. Amen. And I would be remiss, and before I take my seat, if we can say amen for this marvelous, blessed choir that has blessed our hearts. I, um, I'm reminded of the two men who were in a canoe, whitewater rafting, and one of them went to church and the other didn't. And the one who went to church was trying to tell the other one why he needs to believe in God and why he needs Jesus. And the other one said, well, I don't need all that. I, I, I just believe in the great beyond. There's just something out there, but I don't need all that. <laughs> but when you're white water rafting, sometimes the current is calm. And then sometimes it stops being calm. And all of a sudden it got to the point where one of them fell over. And the one who went to church, he was still in there. And whenever somebody falls out, you're supposed to take the paddle. And you reach out the paddle to bring in a person who's out there. And it didn't take long, it took about a half a second for the one who said he didn't know Jesus. But when he hit that water and hit those grass, all of a sudden he said, help me, Jesus. <laughs> and so if we take nothing else from this evening, there's somebody out in this world, some woman, some man, some child, who is in need of Jesus, and we want to communicate to them the truth of the gospel so that whenever they run into the storms of life, they're able to just throw up their hands and say, help me, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we just bless God again for being here. I thank God for my cousin, for him extending this opportunity to our church. And we're just honored to come here. I, I pray that our services to you on this evening have been pleasing. Amen. It's our job that we serve. It's not about always being served, but we want to make sure that we serve God's people. And we want to leave them with something. Amen. 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 Uh, and Holy Ghost Cathedral, would you please stand? Amen. Thank you all so much. Thank you for traveling. Some of you traveling a good distance. But this is what it's about. It's family, right? Amen. This is what it's about. I don't bug you all much. I think out of a little over a year now, we've been somewhere like maybe three times. This is only the third time. Amen. 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 So, but I appreciate you all coming to share in, not just to support me, 
but to share in with your other brothers and sisters that you didn't know until Amen. tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so when we leave Holy Ghost Cathedral, when we leave on tonight, let's not just leave saying we went to Peter's tabernacle. Let's keep them in prayer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Brian, in prayer. Amen. Because we want them to succeed as well. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Will you all please stay? Amen. Let's lift our hands. Father, in Jesus' name, again, we thank you for all that has been said and done on this evening. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we ask that you remain with us, continue to abide with us as we continue to abide in your will. Father, give us traveling mercy back to our various destinations. Allow us to have a blessed night of sleep and rest. And God, as we return back to our sanctuaries on Sunday morning, God, we return back with a praise Jesus. in our heart yes, and we're going to express it with the fruit of our lips to you yes, because you are truly worthy yes, to be praised yes, Father we thank you yes, and we praise you yes, let the people of God say amen, amen. amen. have a good evening Thank you for joining us at Peter's Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church. And may the grace and peace of our Lord be with you always.